Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com. Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show, sponsored by Arnold Clark. I'm Peter Marson, Alan Ruff, Tom McManus, and Alison McConnell here with us on this Monday to look back over the weekend's football and all the burning issues. Don't forget to hit the share button, hit the follow button, and of course, if you're on our YouTube channel, then hit subscribe and you can get all the latest news. And of course, you can join the football family. Delighted to have your company. Thank you to everyone for supporting us once again. A great week of figures last week. They keep going up and up and it can only be down to the fact that uh, uh, we're all offering you our opinion and you're sometimes agreeing, sometimes disagreeing. Let's see what happens today. Let's start off by saying, Ruffy, I think I speak for everybody on the show that we wish Walter Smith a speedy recovery. Um, the rumours were wild um, at the tail end of last week. Um, Walter, confirmed by Rangers, went in for an operation uh, and all we can hope for now is that um, the great man gets back fit and well. Yeah, particularly with everything that's happening at Rangers just now. Uh, I'm sure you will know, be enjoying every minute of it. And yeah, let's hope, hope uh, he comes back with a, a very speedy recovery uh, because we know that uh, what Rangers mean to him and the, and the highlight of what's been happening this year, I'm sure he'll want to be there at the end of the season. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you can tell by the outpouring of support from everybody, Ali, just how much the legend means to them. I think it came as quite a shock for everyone because he's always such a, a big, robust figure, I think, in, in Scottish football. I think the illness that he suffered from has been very private. I think it was kept very firmly within family and, and in-house. So I think there were a few people who would have been taken aback when, when news emerged of, of how ill he was. But, but you're right, I think sometimes in these cases, the rumour mill goes into overdrive and, and people chat and there, there's all sorts that, that does around. So I think the club were right to come out on Saturday evening and just put out a statement and put minds at rest. Yeah, just picking up on that point, it just shows you, Tam, how crazy um, things can be now with social media. There's an immediacy. Mm. Uh, there's certainly nothing that you can, you know, you've got to actually, I always live by that, um, you know, journalistic attitude, which is check, check, counter check. Um, before you even, you know, make any rash statements. I think, you know, early on, certainly late in the in the Friday show, a lot of people were voicing their concern over wild rumours. But thankfully, um, you know, it was confirmed by Rangers and, and Walter's family are private. Had an operation. You just want to see him get better. I think that would be great news in this season of all seasons for Rangers fans, as Robbie mentioned. Yeah, listen, Walter Smith is a legend. He's one of those those guys that, you know, across the whole of Glasgow, you know, similar to Tommy Burns, he's respected by everyone. You know, never forget that image of, of Walter Smith carrying Tommy Burns' coffin in the chapel. You know, and it's two, two totally, totally different sides of Glasgow, two totally different religions. And uh, so that, that, that for me shows you uh, how much respect that he's got for everyone, uh, Walter Smith. So hopefully he's getting better soon. The last time I met Walter uh, was at Helensburg Golf Club uh, when I, I was one of the speakers. And if he can survive 40 minutes of my nonsense, then he can survive anything. So get well soon, Walter. Yeah, 40. absolutely. I think uh, forty I think minutes. Well, well sometimes, sometimes, some, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes he went back over the joke because people didn't get it, Ruffy. So he went back over it and took us through the whole Derry City all over again. Anyway, apart from anything else, yeah, you're right, Tom. Um, best wishes to him. It's certainly good for us, Ruffy, in the early part of our um, starting of this uh, company and this show. Certainly um, will not be forgotten here. Um, we give them all our best wishes too. Uh, so that is one issue. Um, thank you to the countless people who are all over the place. I mean, not only here in the UK, but we get lots of people listening from America, Europe, Australia, New Zealand, who are wishing Walter a speedy recovery and here, here. Um, okay, um, Walter thrived in old firm games and this one coming up still in doubt. Um, that's the one we're getting on this. This, of course, off the back of uh, Stephen Gerrard and John Kennedy uh, releasing uh, videos to say to uh, both sets of fans, look, big game, don't go near Celtic Park. Just stay at home, watch the game, f follow the rules um, and, um, you know, enjoy it from the... The, the, the confines of your own house and the safety of your own house. And I think that message uh, was welcomed over the weekend, but it doesn't seem to be enough at the moment, Alison. This one's still hanging in the balance, apparently. 
It certainly looks that way. I think both clubs have done all they can to, to promote the message about stay at home. I'm not sure you could have said that last week in the aftermath of the title challenge. I think Rangers are quite quiet as a club at coming out and, and asking people to, to stay at home and encouraging them to, to stay away from the stadium and, and going to George Square. But I think it's been a very different tone this weekend. I think there's been a, a clear change of tact. Uh, having the, the captain and the manager come out and appeal to people for common sense. And I think uh, I think it was absolutely necessary. I think if you have to have any chance of this game going ahead, then I think it was vital that the clubs were seen to be doing all they can to promote that message. And we have to hope that the game get, gets a go-ahead. It's, it's as dead a rubber as you're ever going to get. And in this fixture, we all know it could never be described as meaningless. It will always carry weight. And I think... Um, Celtic would want the opportunity to go out and even just salvage a little bit of pride. And, and also, I think there's quite a, an unwelcome start. I think it, it, if Rangers were to win the game at the weekend, I think it's the, the first time in, in, in 29 years or so that they've gone three successive games at Celtic Park, all with victories. I'm sure Celtic would want the opportunity to go and prevent that and just maybe take a small crumb of comfort from what's been a fairly wretched season for them. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm looking at this statement from Nicola Sturgeon, the First Minister, on this issue. Um, no final decision has been made yet. I welcome the statements made by both Rangers and Celtic. I hope the clubs will continue that over the next couple of days. Uh, it, can just, it can't just be one statement and then it's done. Uh, as we know from our experience of the last year, uh, these communications are really important on an ongoing basis. Um, and she goes on to state, um, as we know from her experience, I have read that bit, sorry, um, on an ongoing basis. I spoke to the Chief Constable last week about his views on what might transpire if the Old Firm match goes ahead. They will have intelligence of their own about whether it appears to them that fans in the main are following the advice of the clubs and staying at home, or whether there's a significant risk of fans coming out to gather. On the basis of all that, we will have to make a judgment. I never want to stand here and say football matches can't go ahead, but that's the reality. Big gatherings presents a risk of transmission, and we're trying to get that as low as possible so that we can open up all of the things that we enjoy doing. And of course, um, that statement, you know, off the back of some people being allowed to exercise outside and play some sport. Um, so with that in mind, uh, Tam, the onus now is on people to actually obey the rules. There's a slight caveat that I want to put in this, um, which I'll, I'll speak to Ruffy and Alison about as well, Tom, but anybody who doesn't follow that statement from Celtic and Rangers just clearly can't, they can't abide by the rules, don't want to, don't want to follow them. What can you do with them? I know, it's, it's just idiots, Peter, you know, Listen, I think that I agree with Alison. It's maybe a little bit too late. I think this should have been done maybe a couple of weeks ago. A coordination of both clubs. Every club, you know, saying if they fans to stay away. But I think that, that now, listen, the message is strong from, from the government, from Celtic, from Rangers. You know, you've got managers, captains, you know, it's all over the place. Do not come to the game. And uh, as you said, the clubs have done everything they can. Now you cannot accuse the clubs of anything at this point. It's now down to individuals doing the right thing and being responsible. And, uh, and and staying in the house and watching the game, you know, it's not a hardship. It's, it's sitting in the house and watch a game of football. You know, come on, screw the nut and uh, and don't go to the game. You know, if you if you're thinking about it, you know, I hope that the police go and lift them. You know, because they're they're morons if they go to this game after everything that's came out after the year that everyone's had. You know, if you go and and, and defy that, then you're all in it to yourself. And and, and listen, you're, you're you're a bit of a scumbag to be honest if you go to the game. That's my opinion. Uh yeah, um, I think um, I think I think from a point of balance on this, um, you know, I I would suggest that a number of people just think, you know, we're, we've gone through all the difficulties of this year. We're so close to getting, you know, a relaxation of um, the rules, Ruffy. The only problem I have is the chief medical officer said today a number of people who've recently tested positive were traced to the Rangers title celebrations which makes it worrying. I mean, that is the, the the downside of this. You don't want people gathering together and then suddenly there's an upsurge in cases, Ruffy. The med medical authorities have come out and told, don't do group gatherings because you're going to spread it. And if you cast your mind back to most of the photographs, I, I would say that 
that about 70% of people who were there didn't have masks on at all. I mean, there was a lot of them had, had masks on, but the majority didn't have masks, obviously, with the celebrating and everything. And I, and I agree with Tam, you know, this is going to be put out there every day leading up to this game. Don't go to the game, don't go to the game. Every, every day we're going to see something. And I, I'm like Tam, you know, I, I, I would give the, the, the police as much authority as possible. And if anybody does turn up at the game, they should have the, the biggest vans they've got available and then just lift them up. You know, just don't even let them away with anything. If they are stupid enough to go at the game, you just arrest them. Now, the, the difficulty, and I don't want to get political in any way or veer into uh, a situation of the rights and wrongs of another event, but what I would say, Alison, is there are some people who might look at it and look and say to themselves, well, listen, if what's going on in London with a protest at the weekend um, is fair game, then we're fair game to do what we want. Listen, no one wants to see scenes like that. None of us, you know, it's completely avoidable. This this isn't a, a situation where anyone should be at the ground. Uh, no one should be out in the streets. We're in the middle of a lockdown. The message is unambiguous. It cannot be any clearer. Stay away. And the bottom line is, these are football fans. If you want the season to conclude, stay away. Because if there is any trouble at all at this game, if there is any inclination for people to turn up, you can be damn certain that the final Old Firm game will not go ahead. There, there's no chance that that game at Ibrox will, will go, go ahead if there's any hint of, of trouble. And it could even put the remainder of the campaign in jeopardy, I think, especially now when you look and you see that the title is decided, second place is more or less decided. The, it, I think it just puts the whole thing in jeopardy. The message is clear. Stay away from the stadium. Don't be gathering. If you want to sit at home, have a few beers. Rangers have got something to celebrate. Enjoy it. Enjoy the occasion. Sit, get your phone out, get your Zoom on or get your WhatsApp on and, and exchange pleasantries with, with, with all your mates. And it's not the same. We all know it's not the same. But you do not belong standing in the street outside Celtic Park this weekend. Yeah, the other thing about it, two elements of it which are of particular interest, which I wonder if it will register in any of the so-called fans who are going to do what they want. Um, there, is a, there is a real precarious line that we're treading at the moment with with Sky um, because they've put the money in and quite a lot of the money has, has managed to keep the Premiership afloat this season of all seasons. And when you get to a situation where they are denied screening an old firm game, which gets a huge audience for them, um, that really, I think, you know, increases the pressure on us. Scottish football needs a Sky or a BT or whoever can put vast amounts of money into the game. And that then is distributed among the clubs uh, to let them do what they want to do um, as far as strengthening their side, as far as building up a business um, within the premiership structure. So... You have to bear that in mind as well. Sky Sports will want that big game. They will want the two remaining games to get that huge audience as well. That's the first thing. Secondary to that, um, I do think, and this is the most important one, um, and, and it's to do with the, the fact that if you are going to break the law, uh, you know, as well as the police handing out any kind of fine um, and arresting you um, for gathering uh, with no social distancing and congregating with a number of people around an area that you've been told specifically not to go to. The big worry for me um, and how I would deal with it, Tam, is to get that section of people and make sure that every one of them is known and then ban them. Nope. Don't nope. let them come to the game. Don't, don't let them come to the game anymore because these people think they're a group that can derail clubs. They think they're bigger than them. They think they, that their opinion is more important than the club that they support or apparently support. Yeah, Peter, name and shame. Listen, get, get it on, on, the, on, the, on the website. Get it on social media. You know, name these people, picture them, and, uh, and let's see what happens and, 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 and put them in the neck. Because as we said, there's no excuse for it. You know, we're in a lockdown. You know, I, 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 we're in the strongest possible terms, stay in the house. I think we all share the same message here on this show, and I think everyone, every sensible and responsible person, is following the rules. And uh, you know, it's, you can't just go and do what you want. You know, there, there's rules, and you've got to abide by them. So, 
if you're watching this show and you're thinking about going to the game, then this is not the show for you. Peter, I think yeah, if, you, um, if you look at um, people that have missed funerals, people who have, have had to live stream their final goodbyes to people you've not been able to attend, big life events, people have postponed weddings. If these things are all important enough to adhere to the guidelines, then I think we can we can put a football match somewhere further down the list. Yeah, absolutely. I think we've said a piece on it. You know, we've, a couple of things we've been opening up on. Thanks. I can see them coming in, um, you know, and lots of people actually saying, you know, Walter Smith, a speedy recovery. We did mention Walter at the start of the programme. And thank you to the countless messages coming in, wishing uh, him a speedy recovery from his operation, which Rangers revealed took place um, last week. And, and of course, a lot of people mentioning here, Rocky, and it's a real worry um, when you come out with a catchphrase and then somebody tries to steal it from you. You, and I think that's what Tom did there. You, you knew it Robbie, right away. Yeah. He's been desperate to. He's been desperate to actually make that just, yeah, that's just... on the show. <laughs> he's been desperate that. to see it. Yeah, exactly. He's You've been desperate for a while, but I'm dying to see it. Well, I know because I've made a conscious decision now, sell it, because I, I, I absolutely have. Yeah, that's another one. But I've actually made a conscious decision now that I'm. I, I am going to absolutely blank the morons who who um, are on Facebook and Twitter who say stupid things. If, if, if it's not, you know, it's derogatory stuff, I'm not going to give them the platform. I'm not going to bother with it. I'm going to ask people who are sensible, which is 99% of our, 99% of the people who watch our programme across all the platforms we have it, are decent people and they can look beyond the numpties. So I've decided I'm, I'm you can have that catchphrase for this week, Tam, to be honest yeah. with you. I've decided I'm moving forward. We're going to concentrate on all the nice people who know their football, love their team and want to talk sense on the programme. Um, but of course, sometimes, um, even in the media, uh, there can be a little bit of, um, you know, headlines that actually make me want to fall off the chair, Ruffy. And one of them was Roy Keane wants the Celtic manager's job. Now, I don't know about you, but um, Roy Keane for me, apart from Alison, yourself, Hugh McDonald, Charlie Adam and Stevie Naismith, uh, Tam McManus and Tam Cowan, apart from those guys, um, you guys are top pundits. But out with that, Roy Keane is certainly, as a pundit, for me, he's box office. I mean, he's absolutely hilarious to watch. He pulls no punches. Um, I like listening to him um, at times. But as a Celtic manager, can you hire a man who's got a CV that's failure? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, well, I you would can. love to know who. I'd, no, I'd love to know who brought. Him, I'd love to know who brought him there as a player. Uh, whose idea it was uh, to bring him in, and if it was, if it was the owner's idea, you know, he's obviously got a, 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 some kind of influence on him. I I don't think he's got the temperament to be a manager in a dressing room. Uh, I know he'd be it'd be a hard manager to to play with. It's just the, the some of the stuff he comes away with, as you say, is funny. But in the, in a real life manager, I don't think it would go down particularly well in a dressing room. And you're right, you know, he's not done anything at any, any, any clubs of any notice, so why should he be given the, the job at Celtic just because he's Roy Keane and he played with Man United? You know, so but not for me. I think there'll be other better candidates out there. Strangely enough, Alison, um, I've, I have consistently thought about all the candidates and all the names that keep cropping up along the way, and, I, and I'm thinking to myself, which name do I think is the most credible that could actually turn it around or do exactly what Celtic need at this point? And the more I look at all the candidates and the realistic ones, the ones that I think are pie in the sky, I've just discarded them, but the more I look at all the candidates that are realistic for Celtic, I can't get away from Steve Clark. I think he's a very plausible candidate in a pool where there is a, a dearth of plausible candidates, if that makes sense. Uh, I think the, the options to us from a distance look, uh, they look diminished, I think, when you talk about, when, when you bring in financial aspects and everything else. I mean, if you to go and say, here's your wish list and you have an open checkbook, it's obviously a bit different. But I hear people talking about Martinez. I think that's pie in the sky. I don't think there is any chance of it whatsoever. Um, but what once you come in, I think I think Steve Clark is 
definitely an attractive proposition and he ticks a lot of boxes. However, he he didn't enjoy certain aspects of Scottish football and, and, and Scottish culture when he was up, when he was Kilmarnock manager. He was very open about his distaste for the sectarian element that still raises its head. I'm not sure if he would want to deal with that on a day-to-day basis, although I do think he's maybe missed the day-to-day involvement of club management. I also think it might be why it's so quiet at the minute. I think if he was wanting, or he was interested in taking it, I think you would probably want to keep it hush hush until after the European Championships. But I honestly would say just now, I don't think anyone knows the direction where it's going. Um, to go back to the Roy Keane thing that you raised a minute ago, I think uh, the semantics of it were very interesting. I think it's Roy Keane saying that he's interested in the Celtic job, I think is very different from Celtic saying they're interested in Roy Keane for the job. Uh, and I think at the minute, any name who's available and who looks like a likely candidate, I think you will see a rush of interest around those individuals. Uh, the other thing about Keane too is that he's available, he's free. I think if there was any substantial interest, then I think there would be no reason why you wouldn't go and, and bring him in as soon as possible. But uh, you're right, I think the, the longer it goes, the more intrigue there is and, and the more you think it, it might just be someone who's tied up for a certain period of time and it makes sense until they've completed what it is that they want to do before they come in. But from Celtic's perspective, I think you would want someone in as quickly as possible. We, we all know it's a very short pre-season and you're going straight into to European qualifiers. And it's a it's a substantial job this summer. I think we could we could you can look and see how much rebuilding needs to go and, and players are going to go out and players need to come in. It's it's a huge job this sum, summer for whoever it is that's going to take it. Yeah, um, Tam Norman Heaney actually puts uh, a, a great point together, which I think from a bit of banter um, certainly would be something to, to, to look forward to. He says, could you imagine Keenan Gerrard in the tunnel before the first Glasgow derby? Um, if, it, if, it's any, if it's anything like Keenan Vieira in the tunnel at Ivory, then all bets are off. I think it'd be, it'd be absolutely box office for, for, for the press, for the media. I mean... Keen v I mean, it just, it'd be amazing. But in terms of, of, of being a manager, there's nothing in his managerial record that would suggest him getting a job as, as big as Celtic. You know, I, I appreciate he was an absolute world-class footballer and he's, he's a world-class pundit. As I said, I think he's one of the best pundits in the game. He, he talks a good game, but as Ruffy says, there's a big difference between talking a, game, a good game to doing it in the dressing room and, and getting 24, 25 players on the same page. And I don't think he's been able to do that in his career. I think he's fell out. I, I know several players that worked under Roy, and I think he's had a couple of them by the throat, you know, and they've been training with the youth team or they've been with the transfer list. So he falls out with people a lot in, in terms of in terms of squads and dressing rooms. It's his way of the highway. So for me, it's a, it's, it's, it's a no-go for Celtic, that one. I mean, it's a, it's a, that's a Celtic Daz one. No, not for me. Yep, absolutely. Um, lots of people. I mean, this is the thing about it, Ali, and I'm, uh, again, I, I love it because um, when you look at back pages, it, it, we all, and I appreciate from some of my compadres who work in the written press, we all have to come up with things that will fill back pages, which is the joy of it. So I, when I see a, you know, a manager being linked with that, I think, great, that's, you know, They've gone to ask a player if they think this guy would be good as the, the uh, as the manager. Um, some people phone their mates who are journalists and say, "Look, stick my name in. I really would like a tilt at this job, just to try and maybe shake a chairman's you know head to think, oh, I hadn't actually thought that he was available or or interested. You never know how it how it can all come about. I mean, I had to laugh at the weekend though when it said Chris Wilder's just out of a job and he'd be great for Celtic. Uh, I mean, the, the, and now Derek McInnes is being linked with the Sheffield United job and Paul Heckingbottom's just in the door. I mean, it, it starts to get a bit ridiculous, doesn't it? I think sometimes what you'll find is that, that there's a, a line that appears somewhere. I think in in the the sake of the, in the 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 incident there with the, the Sheffield manager, like what happened was it was a fanzine that suggested the reason he'd left was because he was on his way to Celtic and then all of a sudden, within an hour or two, <laughs> you have a whole whirlwind of uh, speculation and people texting and people phoning and have you heard this and does he tick a box? The first thing you would say is that he fell out with the owners and he didn't want to work with the director of football, so I think you could probably score his name off the list. Um, but I think 
in some ways you have to give credit to Celtic here because no one knows. That's the bottom line. And what you're referencing with with, with um, like Keane being interested in the job and it and and we are discussing it and and it makes the the back pages of the newspaper come down to the fact that there is actually very very little coming out of, of anywhere. Discussions are are clearly confidential. No one has had much of a sniff. And if you're looking at it from a from a from my point of view, that's not good news because um, it, it leaves us looking at blank pages sometimes. If you look at it from the club's perspective, then quite clearly things are staying in-house until they, they get whoever it is that they've identified and they make sure that it's signed and sealed. Yeah, and, and at this point, Rob, you can understand why there's all sorts of wild speculation and names being thrown up in the air because there are two good jobs available. I mean, the Aberdeen job for me is a great job for someone on the basis that whoever gets that job, if Dave Cormack decides to you know, pick the right guy and back the right guy, that's that for me is a great club to, to, to manage as well. Yeah, I think that's why Derek will be disappointed that uh, he got emptied when, when he has done. You know, particularly with everything seemed to be rosy with the training ground and everything. And there's still rumours that the, the stadium, a new stadium might get moved as well. That That's a new era. Uh, and certainly any manager who ha sees that on the horizon, it would be a massive attraction. And that kind of thing will be a massive attraction to bring better players as well. You know, if you have the new stadium and everything going up. So, yeah, there'll be tons, but I think we all agree that that seems to be a done deal just now with the boy Glass. You know, there's too many connections for me. Atlanta being the the team, you know, over there and the, and the Aberdeen connection on the board as well as the, the Atlanta director on the board. You know, it just seems an easy fit and him coming out with who he's going to bring and everything as well seems to be discussed as well. So there's not many managers come out with that before they get the job that they're they're naming the team that they're going to bring with them. So, no, I, I think the boy Glass has got that one. Yeah, it's strangely enough, Tom. You're <laughs> you're smiling away there because he's not got you, you know Stephen. <laughs> you know Stephen Glass, <laughs> and you might as you might as well kick Ruffy into left field. On you go. <laughs> no, he's not got it. He's not spoke to anybody at Aberdeen, uh, Stephen Glass. So he's definitely not got it. I think that Aberdeen are going to take their time uh, and, and put a shortlist together. I think that. Barry Robson and, and Paul Sheeran will be given an opportunity. Listen, I think it's a small opportunity, but if they go and win every game from now the end of the season, then they could possibly get the job. So I think they're concentrating on the, on the here now and trying to catch Hibs, but there's been no contact whatsoever with, with Stephen Glass uh, from anyone at Aberdeen. So I think that uh, I think that's a long way away, to be honest. Yeah, even wait till, away wait, till, is... wait till I just write that down in my pad. What's the day's date? <laughs> yeah. 15th. <laughs> Dal McManus yeah, yeah, says yeah. no chance. I know he's no chance. I think he's no chance. He's saying... He's told you he's not spoke to them. No, but last, last week <laughs> I spoke to two or three people. Last week I spoke to two or three people who said, look, he's in with a shout um, of the job um, because of various things. You know, and these are people who are not wild. Um, you know, ac you know, rumors flying about. There's no, there's no merit in them saying anything. They won't get anything out of the back of predicting Stephen Glass. They just said to me, you know, he's one of the guys being considered. He's certainly a front runner. So that's why, um, you know, I put out that tweet on Stephen Glass. Tam said he's spoken to him. They may well have not spoken to him when Tam spoke to Stephen Glass. Alison, they may well have spoken to him now. Um, on the basis the, that um, they're biding their time. The cynic in me would say that the suggesting the possibility of taking Scott Brown up there is almost to try and enhance his hand in the, the eyes of the Aberdeen chairman and also to, to try and say, look, you know, look what I can bring. It's almost like saying, um, you know, you're just fleshing out your, your CV a wee bit by saying, look what I can do for you and, and, and almost using his name. To, to enhance your own credentials, I'm not sure about it at all. I'm not sure that, that Brown would be a good fit up at Aberdeen, uh, and I'm not sure how, how far discussions would have gone either. Well, picking up on that point, Tam, um, that's, the, that's the next point I was about to make. As far as Scott Brown's concerned, I still think he, he will be invaluable to Celtic for this next season coming up because he will be able to contribute on the park but off the park, I think, you know, his contribution to a new manager would be immense. Yeah, definitely. I think he's still got a lot to offer. And it's not just on the pitch. I think it's off the pitch. 
I think the standards that he sets, how, how he is as a professional, you know, how he how he prepares for games, how he recovers from games, what it means to win things at Celtic. You know, he, he's won everything there. He's been dominant over the last nine years. So I think that he's I think his first possibility would, would, would be to stay at Celtic, but there's you know, there's no manager there at Celtic, he's not been offered a new deal. So he's in a kind of limbo at the minute. Does he wait, hang about until a new manager and maybe a new manager doesn't want him there, doesn't want his influence. So I think he, he's obviously looking at other options as well. So I think it'll, it'll play out the way it's going to play out, Peter. Uh, to be honest, but I think that he's still got a lot to offer, both on the on the pitch and, and and possibly off the pitch as a number two or a coach somewhere. Yeah, quite a lot of people are obviously suggesting, Tam, that uh, although you had a, a a good career there at Hibs, that maybe there needs to be a bit more blue in your room uh, behind you. There, you've got your what strips that you've got on today. This is my Rochester Rhino strip, uh, American team I played for. Back. Yep. Oh, number 10. Wow, must have been a lot of uh, injuries that day. There's nothing being rubbed out that in the back. <laughs> Brilliant. And, and I don't the, know how I got number 13, 13, but I got it. The number 13 behind yeah. you, uh, what's that one? That's my Dunferno strip. Uh, right, okay. and, the, and the sevens of one. But I'm, I'm getting them all framed now. I've got five or six oh, uh, done, and I've got now five or six to get done. So they got up in the wall shortly. But I just thought I'd put them up behind me instead of just a blank wall on my B and M picture that I get caned for. Yeah. I have to be honest with you, Ruffy. I love people that put frames of uh, the strips up on the wall. It's good, like a wee bit of memorabilia up there, don't you? Yeah, it's great. You know, it's great to have a, I mean, you've got a room uh, that's littered with lots of strips, which is tremendous as well. And it's great if you go to somebody's house and you, you can see the pictures and see the, the history and the memories there. And it, sometimes it brings back. I mean, I sent uh, pictures through to Hugh, the, the, the Scotland-England game uh, at Wembley in 77. They're absolutely amazing. In fact, it was just when you were on last week with uh, Gordon McQueen's daughter, I've got a fantastic photograph of Gordon McQueen celebrating the, the goal after he'd headed into the, the, the net at, at Wembley against England. And I'd, I would really like to send him it because I think it's a fantastic photograph. So I'll maybe move that one on if we can get an address. Yeah, I'll get that for you because you'll never believe it, Ruffy. I um I had a chat with um Haley last week um because obviously we wished um her dad uh, the very best, and I had a chat with her um, about the uh, situation that she's highlighting with dementia and of course head trauma, uh, and wants you know people to take an active role in trying to look at the whole situation to protect other footballers in the future and you know people at every level of sport to think seriously about this so she's she's actually fronting a really strong campaign at the moment so i had a chat with her um so we'll, we'll get that passed on ruffy we'll get the wheels in motion for that good yeah, shout because well you're an old it. teammate of his and of course to be perfectly honest with you yeah absolutely and to be perfectly honest with you ruffy, if it wasn't for gordon mcqueen you wouldn't have been at three world cups because he headed the ball out of the box because you never came the corners or anything <laughs> high oh, into people. the 18-yard box so people don't people <laughs> People don't remember that the, that was one of the failings in Argentina that Gordon got injured uh, against Wales just before we left. Uh, and Gordon went across, but he never played in any of the games. And it meant the whole defence was just shuffled about. And a big Gordon had been there. It had been a settled defence. So I think he, it was a horrible time for him just sitting watching that. Yeah, nice compliment, Ruffy. Absolutely. Um, top man, we're, we're staying on the case with him uh, and his daughter's uh, plight at the moment with uh, dementia and head trauma as well. We'll keep you right up to date with that. Um, so lots to talk about. Weekend football, two games involved. Tom, it was a good week for you. I'll talk to you about it in a minute, about the uh, overall points yeah. scored. But uh, yeah, the, 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 the well, well, it was a good week for me as well, but uh, um, you had a better one. Livingston 2, Hamilton Academicals 1. Um, Livy secured top six, Ruffy. Uh, job done for David Martindale. I think he'd be well pleased with that, getting the victory. And I have to say, J. Emmanuel Thomas's goal was <laughs> absolutely top drawer. It wasn't the goal of the weekend, because I'm sure we'll get to Lamella in a minute, but... J. Emmanuel Thomas, the little flick up into the roof of the net, superb. 
Yeah, he couldn't put it in the corner. Uh, in the corner, as he it was a look on his face when he knew he'd done the first bit, <laughs> but he didn't really know where the second bit <laughs> went. But when he when he realised where it had went. It's just incredible, and it's great because we all know what a downer there must have been on after the final. I mean, any any team that gets to a final and loses takes you two or three weeks to get back on the rails. But uh, no, I'm pleased for them. They got in the top six. I, I didn't have them a top six team uh, at the beginning of the season, so they've been the surprise package. And again, you know, I not not this year, but we usually have a debate later on, manager of the year, and. Uh, it's always an open debate, so I'm sure his name will get mentioned. Uh, well, if it does get mentioned, it'll be by you, um, because, because he hasn't been in long enough to get a mention from any, he hasn't been in long enough to get a mention from anywhere else. This the manager of the year award has been renamed the Stephen Gerrard award. It's as simple as that, Ruffy, because nobody else is getting it. Uh, I mean, it's one of those situations where um, I'm, tell me I'm wrong. I mean, Tom, am I wrong? No, Stephen Gerrard's a stick on. He's, he's, he's not lost a game. Well, lost one game, but you know, won the league, stopped ten in a row, unbeaten in the league in, in, in the European run. Oh, phenomenal job! But I don't think there's anybody even comes close to Stephen Gerrard this season. Yeah, absolutely. And the other thing about it as well, I mean, of all years, Ali. Uh, I mean, we get the whole team. We all go to the PFA Player of the Year awards. The Manager of the Year is announced. The Player of the Year is undoubtedly Tavernier, unless somebody has pipped him at the post. In my mind, I mean, it would have been a, it would have been a a complete Rangers night, to be honest with you, Alison. You couldn't in any way, unless you're going to tell me somebody different is going to thwart their celebrations on a night like that. If it had taken place. <laughs> No, I, I just Alison wonder. Um, going. Yeah. Well, of course, but um, Alan McGregor, I think, <laughs> might just pip him. Alan McGregor might take the play of the year. I think. Yeah, there's a shout. I mean, that's yeah, a goal, goal that's a good well. shout, Ruffy. That shows you how yeah. good they've been, Peter. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's me, Ruffy. <clears throat> Sorry, I missed that. Tavernier Peter. for me, but Goldson says. Tavernier, but again, Alison says we know McGregor. It, it, it comes this time of the year, as Alison said there, when particular people do special things. And that tends to sway a wee bit, you know, for the beginning of the season and the middle. Uh, McGregor certainly is the one everybody's talking about. But like Tam, I think Golson had a, is a, a great season. I, I, I don't think there's anybody. Maybe, maybe McGregor, you know, might get in there in a four. Uh, but I mean, Stephen Davis should, will get a shout as well. So... No, I think it would nearly be a clean sweep this clean sweep this year, uh, in the sports writers and the and the and the media. Yeah, it would have been actually. I mean, it's um, absolutely it's a nightmare that there's no event, Ali, because obviously, um, well, you're always in a dilemma because you would maybe go to some of your your cronies in the written press and sit at their table, whereas our table yeah. is just our table's the equivalent I'm of. It, well, it's like Air Canada, the ad, the advert for the nineties. It's it's so it's so good. You just don't want to get off the plane. Is that fair, Tom? <laughs> yes, yeah, I, I think that I've been at some great tables, but you know, Alison will be hobnobbing it with all the journalists with the Herald and the Times and all that. You know, in the car after that, we'll be we'll, we'll be down in Bucky. Uh, it's a certain level yeah. of um, certain level of conversation I like in social occasions. Yeah. Uh, wait, wait, to Tom. <laughs> Wait, wait till Tam, wait Tam, wait till Tam gets a tap for the Daily Record. Then I'll have to go to their table. Then we'll see if there's a bit of loyalty. Uh, exactly. oh. <laughs> oh. One, one half of the starter in the main at the record, and the pudding and the wine at the PLZ. Depends on the three bar. I'll tell you. Yeah, it would be absolutely it. magnificent, by the way. Because the other thing about it is, we could have a big party. We could just wave uh, to the number six. Uh, at his table where there's absolutely no laughs and we are all absolutely rocking. It would be absolutely magnificent. I'd love it. Anyway, apart from anything else, lots of people offering their own thoughts on who would win it. But for me, Gerard Tavernier after that, who would be the young player, Ali? That's an interesting one. Uh, Nathan Patterson has come to the fore only very lately. I think um, he looks like a, a class act. He looks as though he has a potential to go on and, and, and really cement that place. But unfortunately, I don't think you'll see too much of him between now and the end of the season because I would fully expect a, a, a pretty substantial ban to come. Um, but I'm actually not sure. I think um, 
have to have a have to have a think about it, but I'm not sure at the minute. Uh, Lewis Ferry yeah, says we've been okay. up and down. Um, Josh Doig wouldn't be a bad shout. Yeah, there you go. Go about him. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think is, is it, you don't have to be under 23 or is it under 21 again? I can't remember if it's. Josh you've got to be under 18, 21 by it? a specific. Yeah, yeah, you've got to be under 21 by a specific time. I think it's in the June of that year, so Doig would be in there. Um, is Alan Campbell not about 23 now? Um, I don't know, I'm not sure. I think he's, he's, he's I think, I think he might. <laughs> I think he, David Turnbull, yeah, pretending, yeah. depending on David Turnbull's age, I think he could possibly keep in. Yeah, it's an interesting one. We'll need to get our thinking caps on the next couple of weeks for that. Anyway, Livingston won it. Great goal um, from J. Emmanuel Thomas uh, and Hamilton still in the mix. Hard to believe, but Livingston are only six points roughly away from Aberdeen. And that's how good a season it is for them. Mm -hmm. And their budget yeah. compared to Aberdeen's, it's a, I mean, it's an unbelievable achievement. It's an unbelievable run they went on. Uh, and they're about, uh, apart from Rangers, they're about the only team this went on a run. Uh, we keep talking about Aberdeen and Hibs and Kilmarnock and Motherwell. None of them have got that kind of run under their belt. Uh, they've been so inconsistent, it's been unreal. Uh, and that's probably one of the reasons Derek get moved on, I think, to be 38 points behind, I think it is Rangers. You know, they've looked at it, it shouldn't be that big. You know, but, uh, and that's why he's obviously been moved on. But no, that wee run that they had, you know, has established where they are and they deserve all the, the abundance they get because, I mean, okay, we we say we don't like the kind of football they play, but sometimes they do, you know, they, they can do it, but they play to their strengths and that's where why where they are. Yeah, um, I'll tell you, Hamilton against St Mirren this week, Tom, is going to be an absolute mm -hmm. cracker. It's the last game before the split. Oof, what a game that's going to be. Yeah, but a massive game. I think that obviously Hamilton are still in the mix. Um, St Mirren, I think, are, are they are they clinched the top six? I think they maybe need something to just to get in the top six. So I think yeah, it'll, be, it'll be a big. Nah, I think it'll be a big game, and uh, you know I, I think that Hibs done certainly done Commander a big favour coming back at the weekend. And, you know, Commander, you know when Ross County scored, they were looking marooned at the bottom. They were looking in big trouble, and Hibs managed to come back and do them a favour. So still very tight at the bottom. I've got to ask you, Tom, I watched the game, um, Ross County, uh, Hibs, the highlights of it. John Hughes says he, he thought, you know, that the Martin Boyle penalty award, Martin should have had a pair of Speedos on. Um, I'm not so sure. I thought he was being slightly over the top on that because I, when before I watched it, I was in there with a preconceived idea in my mind that this was going to be one of those big Greg Luganis mm. dives. But he waits for the contact at the back of his heels and he, and he goes. Yeah, obviously, I've got listen a lot for Hibs TV, but I've, I've got a penalty, Peter. But I don't think it was a dive either. So I, I think Yogi's obviously hurting after the game, straight after the game. He's disappointed they've lost the game. But I don't think it's a dive. I don't think he's went down looking for it. I think there's been a slight contact and he's went down. And for me, it's not a penalty. The referee gives it, so there's not no much you can do about it. But Hibs would take it. But Martin was certainly lucky not to get sent off because he'd already been booked uh, for a lunge out wide on the full back and then and then the second one's a clear dive. He can't condone that and it should have been a second yellow. So I think that Martin well, in terms of diving for the penalty, I don't think it was a dive, I don't think it I, I don't think it was a penalty either. And had maybe got a wee bit of a break. Yeah, uh, and Ruffy, uh, Tam's uh, love child, Nesbitt, back to the forum, <laughs> scores 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 the back goal up. of yeah, absolutely. He's he's all happy again, and the Hibs, Hibs fans love him. Well, some of them. Um, but he, he <laughs> claims that it was maybe maybe a misunderstanding with the link to Birmingham. I don't know how you can misunderstand. I want to go, and I'm not being allowed to. But nevertheless, he's uh, he's still a Hibs player. He scored the goal, um, and I wonder, Ruffy, is he one of those players of a clutch of players who've got an outside chance of being in that squad for the Euros? Uh, I think he'll have to do a lot more uh, than what he has been doing. Obviously, he hasn't been playing that much. You know, the, the goal will give him a bit of confidence. Uh, his link-up play looked good uh, when when things were going in Hibs' way and he was in the, the right place at the right time. But no, I think he has to show Stevie Clark that he, he can get back to where he was, uh, that these offers were coming in for him, you know, because we certainly are really struggling for a striker. Uh, and I, I feel sorry for Steve Clark because at the end of the day, big strikers win you games, and we don't have one. 
you know, and there, there's games coming up. So he maybe get a shout. It'd uh, be interesting to see uh, who he includes, uh, people that are maybe on the fringe. But uh, I think he'll stay to the tried and trusted. But uh, there's some important games coming up. But Nisbet really needs to go on some kind of wee run. Yeah, if he needs to go on a wee run, Ali, Lauren Shanklin wants to be in the mix. Um, dare I say it, does Lee Griffiths need to be on a wee run? I think he needs to do so much more. I think um, he, he's not played regularly. And when you look back, he hasn't played regularly really for three seasons. I think when you when you look back to his stats, I think he's played a full 90 minutes. I think it's less, I think it's fewer than 10 occasions where he's actually managed a full 90 minutes. I think what you would have to see is a, a concerted effort between now and the end of the season of playing regularly. But I just don't know that there's any evidence to suggest that he has the fitness and, and capability of doing that or whether or not he's he's going to do enough to to get into the team. But it's a real headache for Steve Clark because it's not just that you don't have any of the strikers scoring goals. They've also dried up in the middle of the park. Cal McGregor's not been as prolific this season as he's been in previous campaigns. John McGinn's not scored a lot of goals this term for Aston Villa. So there, there's a, an issue there for certain. You, you really need someone... To, to try and seize the opportunity in the, the remainder six, seven league games to, to push their case for inclusion. But at the minute, I think you can see it's going to be a problem for us and when we get to the Euros this summer. Yeah, even Dykes hasn't been banging in the goals, Tom. Mm. No, he's struggling down there, Peter. He's, he's getting a bit of stick off the QPR fans as well. And uh, I don't think he's scored in a number of weeks. He's, he, he's been on the bench, actually. He's not been playing, so... Yeah, I agree with everything that's getting said. We are struggling. We've got, you know, struggling for, for goal scorers, struggling for goals. And it might be that Stevie Clark needs to get the Craig Levine eh, 6 4 0 up again and try and play for three draws. I hope that's enough. <laughs> 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 the, the, well, looking forward to it. Ready to find somebody. Yeah. <clears throat> Absolutely. It's a shame it's because for, for the likes of Griffiths, if he's on form, it's a stage where that's set for him. We've seen what he can do on the big occasion. He's performed well at Champions League and Europa League level. We've, you know the goals against England. I think if he was just fit, he's probably the country's most natural and talented striker. But he he just uh, he's just not had it all season in terms of being available for a consistent <laughs> run of games. I think I think it's sad because he he's probably the most gifted striker in the country. Peter. Yeah, you say that. You say that, but he's not for me. Um, <laughs> he's a great striker. He's a gifted striker. But I think the last three years he's wasted his talent, and he's lived off. Yeah, if you look at his goal scoring for Scotland, if you look at his goal scoring for Scotland, two goals against England, he's lived off it. No, I, I think as well. You look at three managers can't be wrong. Brendan Rodgers, Neil Lennon, and now even John Kennedy's coming out and saying he's not fit enough to play. So. Sometimes you've got to look at yourself in the mirror and say, are you doing enough? Are you fit enough? Can you be working harder? Uh, and I think that you can't, you know, the steam managers and all of them can't be wrong. Yeah. When you look um, at that game in shows... Canada, you know, Celtic are crying out for a goal to, to prevent handing Rangers a league and he's on for, what, the last six, seven minutes or so? Yeah, well, that's down to it's down to him, Ali. Um, there's no excuses for him, not in my book. Um, Chris Andrews just shows you how lockdown can affect so many people. Chris Andrews says another earthquake around Cumbernauld area um, has had an effect on Ruffy's pictures, um, and Chris was wondering any chance of fixing them. Any chance of fixing them, Ruffy? Ruffy, your <laughs> pictures are all over the place, honestly. So look at it, honestly, you think. You'd actually well, think you were on a ship. You think you were on a ship that was in the middle of a storm because they're all they're all over the place, Ruffy, and it's driving people <laughs> mad who are watching the program over your left oh. shoulder. I don't know. Did you put it up with the last pin that you had? Look at it. That's it's the right. It's just shoulder. all over the place. You need to sort. You yeah. need to sort it out. Um, have a look at them and get them sorted yes, out. I'm Chris Andrews is going to go absolutely. I'll okay, get that. Yeah, he's going to go mental. <laughs> look, look it's clearly <laughs> some jealousy. There are there are very few people who can host a, a World Cup game and line up uh, standing, getting ready to play against Brazil. I think it's just a, a bit of the green-eyed monster coming out, Ruffin. Oh, well, I agree with you 100%. Ooh, yeah, awesome. yeah. Well, well, in that <laughs> case, oh in that case, <laughs> you're the first show. out. <laughs> you can sit with Ruffy because that's one of the yeah. reasons why we oh. don't sit with them. No. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, 
<laughs> so, so here's the, hey, what, a here's lovely, the premiership. what a lovely book what a lovely bookshelf you've got there Alison thank you <laughs> so, Sam and I are discussing uh, the titles at the dinner yeah, absolutely. Listen, well, if you uh, if you like, you better you better you like talk to me early on then, and don't leave it too late. <laughs> I was just about to say, if you like, if you like the chat with intellectual journalists, Alison, you're about to witness the polar opposite with Bonzo sitting next to you. Um, let's have a look at the uh, Premiership table to see exactly where your side is uh, in the twelve uh, posted there. Rangers champions, Celtic, Hibs, Aberdeen. Uh, Livingston, St Mirren there in that top six, and of course another another point uh, would secure it all uh, for them. Um, and of course St Johnston, so close, but uh, just not enough in the end. As far as the bottom end is concerned, well, it's tough, it's tight, and there's still a bit of work to do, and they all start to play each other, so it could be very interesting indeed um, at the bottom end. Uh, now, last week, Gabriel just set himself up brilliantly. There was a few people patting him on the back. Uh, lots of Rangers fans loved Gabriel uh, for picking the entire Rangers team in the team of the week. Um, I wonder how many Rangers players will get in this weekend's team of the week, even though they weren't playing. Gabriel, will he be pandering to his Rangers fans and mates, or will he pick a team of the week based on the four teams that were playing? Staunch FC. Ross Laidlaw made more saves than any other keeper this weekend with four. Nicky Devlin was outstanding and created both goals from right back. Paul Hanlon found himself playing left wing and he assisted Kevin Nisbet's winner. Brian Easton made a few crucial tackles and had a hand in the Aki's goal. Josh Doyle got up and down that left wing all game and he created several chances. Jackson Irvin was man of the match for Hibs. He was everywhere. Scott Pittman scored his sixth goal of the season to secure Libby's top six finish. Jason Holt was industrious and won the midfield battle. Cal Smith scored a lovely goal for Aki's, albeit in vain. J. Emmanuel Thomas's flick and volley is up there with the goal of the season. Martin Boyle was criticised for diving, but he won the penalty expertly and then converted it. Well, I don't know about you, Tom. That's an absolute disgrace. Not one single Rangers player in that team of the week from Gabriel. That uh, that has wrecked a thirty-four week run from him. Incredible. You Incredible. Last week. Yeah. No. Good. Good to see four Hibs players in there. Uh, it was a it was a very good Hibs performance at the weekend. I thought Martin Boyle was outstanding. I thought Jack Snurvin was the best I'd seen him. I thought the two of them have got a great. You know, link up between themselves and know where each other is all the time. They're trying to fit, Irvin's trying to fit, thread them through all the time. So, no, I, I, I agree with that team. Good team, Gabs. Oh, get well yep, soon. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Um, uh, as far as the uh, predictor scores, here's how it all looks in the predictor. It's getting uh, mightily, oh, not close. Uh, I'm on 273, you're on 280, and Ruffy is on 266. So uh, Ruffy is still just at this point seven points behind me, Tam. You're seven points ahead of me. Uh, of course, both of us get the 2 1 correct. Um, I, I predicted Tibbs would win up there, but you get the 2 1 scoreline correct. You'd, you had two full points. Yeah, 10, 10 out of 10 this weekend for me, so it just pulls me. Even further away for the old gent, who looks as if he's going to be digging into his pocket for some sort of set meal yeah. for three. Yeah. Um, Ali, obviously you've obviously, you know, um, been very complimentary to Ruffy. Would you want to be involved in this night out where Ruffy <laughs> buys wine and food for everybody? Yes. yes. Well, <laughs> I thought you would be. It usually happens just every a night, year. So. Just a night out. Just every year anyway. <laughs> I think I'd go I miss, for a night yeah, out with anybody yeah. just now. Like, just t yeah. take me out. Just like, um, I, I just, I can't wait. I can't wait to go out. I'm sure everyone feels the same, but I'm, I'm bored. <laughs> I'm just bored stuff. And as you feel spring coming and the weather getting better and the lighter nights, it just enhances that feeling of, of wanting to, to go into town and, and sit and have a few glasses of wine and have a chat with someone that you're not related to. 
<laughs> Maybe not the best line that you used there, Alison. Just any, any, anybody take me out when we're about 16 hairy monsters. I mean, I've had a look at a profile photograph. <laughs> so, there's about three, three Frankensteins and a plug. A last shout in the last two seconds here, Alison. Calm yourself. Uh, anyway, I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're looking forward to it. We're getting so close to getting a night out. Although I am told, Ruffy, um, just from certain quarters, that um, you're allowed to. Somebody said to me today, and I might as well tell you, it's our producer said that Five Asides is back outside as well. Yes. Non -con non contact Five Asides. I don't yes, know you, Ruffy, you but I, don't, I, don't, I don't think I. <laughs> I don't think because of my gob, Ruffy, I don't think I've played non contact by the sides since I was five. <laughs> yeah. No, you'd be good at non contact because you're never in, near anybody in your wee circle that you donate, <laughs> dominate the game. You know, so you'll be fine. <laughs> I actually cannot wait, Ruffy, for us to get our five aside team together to head up to East Kilbride. Uh, to see how good McManus is now in his in his latter years. Now he's forty, you know. And, he, and people, I don't know if you've noticed on Twitter, a lot of people now have started to. Well, a lot of people have stopped posting the goals that he scored for Hibs because they had that eight week run where they were posting all the goals he scored, and now they've ran out of material. So there's no <laughs> goals on Twitter anymore. So, only eight goals. I, 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 yeah, <laughs> I I can't wait for us to get the visa, Ruffy. And head through to East Kilbride uh, to Can take on his, his, his five aside yeah. team. It will be. <laughs> Absolutely. You know. Yeah. It'd be great to see what uh, who he picks for his team. You know, be, be calling in names for the past. Who would be your first pick, yeah, Tom? Or, yeah. If you'd if you'd your ideal five aside team, Tom, who would be your first pick? If you were picking five, who would be your goalie from all the guys that you played with? Oh, all the guys I've played with. Yeah. Uh, Kasper Schmeichel. Kasper Schmeichel. Falkirk. Yeah, good yeah, shout. Who's your other four? Who's the other four? Because obviously you'd be a sub. <laughs> <laughs> Frank Sozzi, Russell Latape. Oh. Uh, John O'Neill. That is, a, that, that's enough. John, John O'Neill, wonderful player. Sozi and Latape. I mean, come on, Alison. Nobody would get the ball off that lot. That's no, a good fight. We would pay to watch. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I have to tell you, though, Tam, uh, Ruffy doesn't stay for long. <laughs> That's all I'm telling you. The last time I asked him to come and watch a game we were playing in, I hit one from about 25 yards into the roof of the net and he turned around, got back into his car and said, I've had enough, I can't bear it, and went home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, other, um, the other incredible uh, five-a-side thing that springs to mind was Scotland-England game in the morning that uh, the press, Scottish press, played the English press. <laughs> and we were, we were told a colleague of ours was a fantastic goalkeeper. The cat <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> who proceeded to lose about fourteen goals in about two minutes spell. It was absolutely unfair. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and you know the funny thing about it, we were playing the English press and the Scottish press were playing against him, Alison. And the cat, who shall remain nameless, goes in goals. <laughs> and he said to Ruffy, Ruffy, have you got any advice for me? And Ruffy says, Whatever you do, don't dive. And he says, why is five asides goalkeepers is all about staying on your feet? He says, no, if you dive, that surface looks quite sore. I wouldn't dive if I was you. <laughs> you'll, you'll hurt yourself. <laughs> there you are. There you are. Fantastic. Um, Ali, a bit of good news here. I don't know if it's good news, but Scotland's match in March 25th against Austria. They're going to be missing quite a few players because of this mm, rule that doesn't thing. allow them. Yeah, it doesn't allow them to travel with their, their parent clubs. Um, that's a lot of players, as you can see, that are not going to be available to Austria, but the game will go ahead. I, I saw them saying this afternoon that they were going to try and appeal it to, to, to see if it would still be possible to, to have them available. But if they don't, you're right. It's I think it's 18 players or something like that that are all based in Germany for them, um, just given their quarantine rules, the Bundesliga's quarantine rules, and they, they won't be allowed to travel. So you would think it should definitely play into Scotland's hands. 
Yeah. Uh, just before we go, a couple of things I want to talk about. Just quickly, I'm going to read out Robert McLeod. Robert McLeod, who says, Peter, um, if I was picking the five, I'd go Schnelders, Miller, McLeish, Weir and Archibald. Oh, that's a five and a half, isn't it, Ruffy? Uh, Steve Archibald. Mm -hmm. We had him on the show. We, ha we were out for a, a session with him in Barcelona, Ruffy. I don't know about you, but I love the man. I th he's a top draw for me. And I'll never forget, Ruffy, we asked him on the show, did you used to pick up Paul Kane and all the YTS boys at Hibs in the back of your Rolls Royce? And he just looked at me and went, yeah, as if as if it was the norm that you go to training in a Rolls Royce. Who goes to who goes to training in a Rolls Royce? Steve Archibald, outrageous stuff, wasn't he? Yeah, he was a completely changed man. You know that uh, he was great fun and what a legend in uh, in Barcelona. You know to have your own seat in the, the director's box just shows you how well you've done in the game when he was over there. Yeah, Archie Gall is what they call him over there. Archie Gall, fantastic. Uh, listen, uh, last point then, guys. Tam, unbelievable. Lamella, the Rabona. Oh. I, jump, I jumped out of my seat and I thought, that is outrageous, brilliant. One of the best goals I've ever seen, Peter. I, I, honestly, I, I can't, can't do that. Uh, I'd end up breaking my, my, my leg. You know, it's, it's such a difficult <laughs> skill to do. Uh, and, and for him, he, he's kept it on the ground and he swerved it around the boy. It's absolutely unbelievable. And it's within it pace. You know, nobody's even seen that coming. It was a fantastic goal. And, you know, I think a lot of the Premiership games lately have been really boring and tedious. But that just, something like that, it just it ignites your love for football again, doesn't it? Even though you're, not, even though you're neutral, you don't support either side. Just seeing something like that, it just gives you a, a wee feeling inside. Imagine. It was magic, Ali. That's the type of thing that kids, if they were at the game, would just go home and just talk about it in the schoolyard non-stop. It's a shame that there was no one there to see it, wasn't it? It's like one of the... Well, but there's so many games, I think, this season where you felt for fans not being in St. Johnson winning the League Cup. And I think that was just a moment where you think fans would have loved that. It's just it's such a it's such a unique goal. It's like one that you'll very rarely see that. Just the... the the skill and the, the, the willingness and the courage to take it and, and execute the shot and for it to go in. It's it's a shame that, yep, that there was no one there to see it. Yeah, and of course, there's quite a few goalkeepers over the weekend, Ruffy, who just decided sometimes a shot's that good, will not bother going for it. And that was one of them, wasn't it? He just looked as if to say, that's outrageous. Yeah, it's a, I mean, the, it's when they hit the ball so quickly, you know, that uh, you don't have time to adjust yourself. And certainly, you know, it's just it's just spectacular. You know, it's just there's not many footballers have that ability to do that. Yeah, last point, and I only want one word answer for you, and then we're going to go. Everybody, don't give me a uh, and then a uh, 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 uh. Um, I put this out on our Twitter feed. Um, two best players in the left-back position playing in the English Premier League. There's a big battle going on. <laughs> Who's the better of the two? I think we should celebrate both of them. But I'm now swaying. I'm now swaying. 51-49. Um, Robertson or Tierney for you, Ruffy? Um, I'll go Tierney. Tierney. Um, Alison? Tierney. Tam? Tierney. Wow. Um, I can tell you right now, 65% to 35% are in favour of Tierney on the poll that we've got on uh, our Twitter at the moment, at PLZ Soccer. Um, it's all about opinions. I, I, I was with Robbo for a long time, but I'm now looking at Tierney and thinking, he's, he's special. Yeah, well, Robo. Robertson, Andrew, Andrew Robertson is <laughs> a great player. Yeah, um, but, me, uh, I'm swinging. I'm swinging to Tier. I'm swinging. I'm swinging to KT. KT. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. Anyway, apart from anything else, don't forget to follow us. Uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button on our YouTube. Thanks to the at least now twelve and a half thousand people. I'm just seeing the numbers coming in. Twelve and a half thousand people have offered to take Alison out on a night out because she just won't go out with absolutely anybody on a night out. It's incredible. The numbers are everybody. Oh, you want to see some of the photographs here, by the way. Fantastic. Wow. Um, let's see if Alison's punching above her weight when we launch the competition tomorrow on the programme. 
<laughs> anyway, apart from anything else, thanks to Ruffy, thanks to Ali and Tablet Manager and myself, Peter Martin. Thanks to you for watching. Expect the best used.